leadership skills in organizations are the last remaining source of major leverage in business results. And we're talking not 5 or 10% increase in improvement in results that you might get by shaving stuff off, off expense or, or you know, a new program here or there. We're talking about new products, new lines of business, new concepts of how you do business, things that really dramatically change and can easily produce three or four or five or more times the profit at the end of the day. It's not unusual to see that the leaders in the industry are maybe 20 times, 10 or 20 times as profitable as the average company. I would characterize Hudson's Bay, for instance, as an average company. It survived when 26 other big retailers went out of business when Walmart came to Canada. But it isn't Walmart. And when it went private, Walmart's results were 16 times better annually than Hudson's Bay was producing. Hudson Bay was still in the game, still making money, still returned to shareholders, but minuscule compared to what Walmart was able to do. And the difference is, literally, how Walmart does it, they're very ordinary people, and I know because I've worked for uh, one of them as a CEO that we bought into, uh, into Hudson's Bay, and I literally mean bought in, and then 18 months later fired after he'd lost us $300 million. Um, and we had to buy him out as well, although not nearly as much as his contract said we would do if we fired him. Um, Interesting challenges that, you know, Walmart came to Canada in 1994, blew a whole bunch of HBC creative programs out of the water because we, the board thought we should hunker down and just do, stick to the knitting in Canada, big mistake, cut off the creativity. And Walmart in three months retooled the entire Wolco chain that they purchased, you remember Wolco, used the same people. And 12 years later, we're doing three times the revenue that Hudson's Bay had been able to build up to over those 12 years. Three times the revenue. So it is not at all out of kilter to say that you can get 3 to 10 or 15 or even 20 times the results. But it's through creative solutions, and they come through a certain type of leadership. The second thing the research tells us over and over again along with CEO's biggest headache is people, which comes out at the 75% of them saying that in every survey you see, is 80% of people in leadership positions currently are not using the skills that are required for developing this creative stuff underneath them. They're not the right set of leadership skills. And one of the reasons for this is we know way too much about leadership. We hear way too much about it. We're told by so many resources what to do and what's most important and so on that we lose track of how it all fits together. And my entire goal in working with Strategic Capability Network is to try and help people get focused on the core issues that really make the difference. And then you can hang all the other issues around them. And that's what you'll see on the front of my card, little tiny words, that when I ask people on a flip chart, you know, give me the thing, the important things about leadership, in three or four minutes, I can scribble down a hundred words that people tell me are the most important things about leadership. And I put about 15 of them on the front of that card in little tiny type to show you that they do fit in around the core principles but they confuse us so we can't see where the core principles are. So the unfortunate thing about the 80%, you'd say, well, okay, 20% of companies then should be doing really well, but it's not the case. Because the 80% get in the way of the 20% in your organizations who could do creative leadership development of their people and bring forward ideas. And until we reach a tipping point, which is probably somewhere up around 40 or 50 percent of people using the broader, more creative style of leadership, we're not going to see real momentum. So Walmart's not, honestly, their people aren't all that much more creative than Hudson's Bay. What the 
difference is, is they work in an environment that encourages them to try and encourages them to bring forward ideas and occasionally picks up on those ideas and it makes a massive difference. So, and, and you see that in, in every industry. In Southwest Airlines had a new idea way back. Everybody thought they were crazy. Now they've outlasted something like 349 other airlines in the United States. They're the only guys making big money in the airline business there. So, you know, it's the new ideas, Toyota and so on, and how you do things and what you do, what products you bring forward and so on. <coughs> Toyota generates, they say, from, and I believe them, from their 300,000 staff, about 50 suggestions per employee every year. 50 times 300,000, which is like a million and a half suggestions. Now, some of those might only, those are implemented suggestions. They might only be implemented for two weeks until somebody thinks of a better idea for whatever it is. They get. But in general, you can see the impact that it's given Toyota over GM over a period of 20 or 30 years. Stuff doesn't happen overnight, but you can have a huge impact in two or three or four years. And, I, and I've been through this with um, what we call high-performance teams, fortunately, about four or five times in my career. And it's amazing when you're working as part of a really energized team that's thinking up problem solutions to things as fast as they can go. So. Um, the very simple answer that I want you to take away today is that, that we need to shift the model that we have in our heads of leaders as command and control type guys who do their own thing and, and bull through because they know the answer when everyone else is wrong. There's a place for that. And if you're on a sinking ship, you want the captain to know the answer when everybody else may be wrong and get you safely into the lifeboat. But we're not on the burning platform most of the time. And, the, and efforts that companies go through to create a burning platform so everybody will immediately do what the CEO tells them to do, it doesn't work. You burn people out. And it, it works once or twice, and then they've had enough. So the most effective leadership style is very simply described as coaching.